Welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Um, today I've got sitting in front of me the 50 cal um, extreme long range project that I've been up to. Um, I've got some updates to bring you in the way of what I've been up to and what we've been waiting for. Um, and for those people who haven't seen, I'll go basically through the what we're up to. Um, we have um, three major components that we've got done for us. One is a true flight barrel, which is a 1 in 15 twist, so the standard sort of twist for a 50 cal, 33 inches long. Um, the guys over there did up the, the, they chambered it for us in standard 50 cal uh, and also set it up to suit my custom made muzzle brake on the front of it. So that's the barrel, Barnard action, really good action, really nice, really trouble free, very strong, able to deal with large presses, all that sort of stuff, always a gentle bolt lift, really nice, um, and runs a their custom Barnard trigger, so the target trigger, so set down at, I think it's 1.1 pounds, so nice and low, really nice and precise, really like it, works really well. Um, it's in this Dolphin chassis, uh, which is the chassis of the Dolphin Rifle Company over in the UK, uh, they actually gave us this chassis really nice chassis really strong really nice and rigid um, there's actually a aluminium v-block that it's made to accept the v-block comes from barnard and it accepts it inside there so that works really nicely on the back here i've modified a little bit the chassis is nice the way it's set up i and really set up for all sorts i set it up with a bit heavier because i really wanted to push some loads and like i said setting up something in the fairly extreme elr um, I've used all their setup, I put a larger butt stock on it, built my own bag rider that runs on the bottom here, and I've also run um, this, I've made a cheek riser out of solid steel, so I've put a bit more weight into this rifle, um, just to make it shoot as well as I can to try and do the testing I'm doing. The other thing you'll notice, and of the other custom pieces on here, the most notable piece is this um, bipod. Yeah, I should say the other thing on here is this is my normal floating scope. So I run this on a fair few rifles. This is the Night Force Attacker 5x25 sitting on an air attack base on here. And this is a Barnard 60 MOA rail. So I can wind this. This scope gets 128 minutes in it. That gives me another 70 minutes on the bottom here. So I can get 198 minutes of elevation out of this scope. And of course, so then I can run the Charlie Turek and things on the front of it and go up to 500 MOA if I want to. But that's that little stuff there. This bipod is, the bipod is a proper heavy duty bipod designed for the likes of 50 cal. Nice, big, rigid bipod, very strong. Now, the reason it looks a bit weird is I've made this custom stuff here. And what I actually ran into with this bipod, really nice and strong, but no flexibility, nice and rigid. Really doesn't move around too much at all. Um, that sounds like a good thing. I actually prefer a bipod that rocks backwards and forwards. So then I can push it forward. When it goes bang, it rocks backwards and forwards and I get a nice little linear action out of my barrel. No skidding feet, none of that sort of stuff. I'm not shooting like F-Class, I'm shooting with grounded feet. So I want them to be able to grip and normally ask my bipod to move. When I got this bipod for this project, I realized it was not gonna move and it wasn't gonna be, it's made to not flex. Um, it's made to be able to deal with this. It's made for the feet to skid. But I didn't want it to skid, I want this to slide. So I've got these two linear action bearing blocks and a linear action rail that's in here. Rubber mounts either end. Um, and that means that I, it moves backwards and forwards very smoothly on roller blocks. So it actually moves backwards and forwards without any problems. That, it, that is what's designed to make sure this gets a very smooth action. The other thing that you see down the back here is my new version 4 bag base. So it's then running a lot more rigid, um, F-Class style, or just a nice heavy <coughs> bench rest style shooting bag, which means there's even more strength in there. It's a wider bag base system as well, but that means I really can get, and I look forward to shooting it. It's gonna be nice and controlled and really good on that sort of score. Let me do the testing I'm doing. Anyway, that's the little list of bits and pieces. Um, what I've actually done with the rifle so far is done a fair bit of testing trying to get out to um, fairly extreme long range. Now, what that means is, what I'm actually trying to do is get a bullet that will let this thing shoot at um, around two miles, so 3,600 yards, um, 
with around the 200, maybe 250 MOA. So something that's in that range I can do without anything bolted on the front of it, I can do off this rifle. Whether that's realistic or not, I don't know. But the testing I did meant that these rounds in front of you, that's I think almost all of them, there's a couple more, but the AMAX was almost, well, uh, uh, up until this end one, this, this AMAX, which is a regular Hornady projectile, um, it's still a good target projectile, it's a very good projectile, I don't want to downrate it at all, but it is still a copper-coated, lead-core, aluminium-tip projectile. My thoughts were it shouldn't be too hard to be able to buy a monolithic bullet that is more efficient. Um, more efficient meaning that in what I'm talking about is it travels through the air with needing less MOA. So for the same bang, it'll travel further than other bullets. Not more efficient in meaning it's going to hit the target better or more efficient in all the other ways you could use that word. I'm talking simply how it travels through the air, which is more than just ballistic coefficient, but it is involving ballistic coefficient. So I, understand, I wanted the most efficient bullet um, and I found that all these other bullets that I've tried here weren't as efficient as the AMAX until I tried this bullet here, which was actually made by Barnard. They're not bullet makers. They did not build them to sell them. They did a bit of messing around, didn't actually get to test them or test them a little bit. I don't, I've forgotten exactly, but they had some there and said, do you want to try them? And that's this bullet on the end. And it was the most efficient in my traveling through the air of all of them. I've got some more to test, I only had a few here, but it was definitely to the point oh, where I like tried right all the things it I does. could find, done a lot of reading right I could edge. find. Um, like a lot of people clock. like different bullets, a lot of people like the cutting edge bullet, and there's some no doubt very accurate bullets, no doubt work very well, maybe the, for, the, for the ELR stuff it's better to be in the higher altitude for them where it's, it travels a little easier, but for me down here I found they weren't efficient enough and weren't keeping up with the other bullets. So. That led me to the world of, um, I really sat down and thought I want to go through and design my own bullet. So what I did on that score, well hold the phone, I'll just I'll put this down out of the road and we'll um, carry on. So that's down over there. Um, what I did on that score was go through starting to try and find someone to me, me, machine bullets for me. Need a good CNC lathe. Uh, <coughs> a setup that can run enough speed to be able to turn copper, lots of details, um, and most engineering shops certainly is something that I could, I don't have a CNC lathe, I couldn't do it in that way, I could build one but that doesn't do me any good. I need something that can punch out as many as I want when I want to order them. Um, I went through most of the places that could do that, most places weren't interested in taking it on. Not tooled up for it, not interested in it, it's bullets, blah, all, all the different things that went through. Found a place that, uh, a couple of places that would do it, um, some bullet manufacturers would take it on, but you're ordering five or 10,000 bullets um, and an unknown design. It's not something I was going to step into. Um, but I found that eventually ended up with a place that said, listen, we went through backwards and forwards and we'd come up, they could do 100 bullets at a cost that was still expensive for 100 bullets, but it was something that I saw as achievable, sort of. Did a bit of backwards and forwards, thinking about it as to what I could do, trying to make sense of it, and eventually come up with the idea, wait a minute, I'll ask, if we can get 10 different profiles, I said no problems at all. To do 10 different profiles, it changed the cost a tiny bit, but really it ends up in the same sort of cost. So that's what I did. 10 different profiles of, so that's 10 bullets of 10 different profiles, 100 bullets. So what I got down to is these 10 bullets. Um, the reason I made slight changes between each one, but only one slight change, or largely only one slight change, was so I could test what that change, change to the, made to the bullet. Um, the reason I went with this basic format was that I, it is a format that made sense to me in the shapes and the angles that I was working with. Um, there is a slight negative I banged into is they're all, uh, listen, some are the right weight, some are too heavy. And I'm going from 920 grains right up to, the, sorry, from 820 grains right up to the nearly 900 grains. Um, what that means is I'm probably going to not have enough twist in my barrel, um, but we'll see. There is, there is a basic equation of length versus, um, versus twist, uh, which is which we're, what we're running with for the calibre. Um, and on that level, we're pushing past it in almost all of them. 
but I've seen that work on occasions. There's other things. The basic length versus twist is only actually a simplified part of a lot larger equation, and it's obviously an equation that's been worked out with bullet shapes that were that were used. Um, my, I suppose I'm doing a bit of learning, and I'm a bit, doing a bit of learning the way I do it, which is sometimes you've got to, I've got to go through and make the mistakes that were written down and repeat them, so I can say, okay, I, now I, I fully believe it. Other times I go through and push through what is written down and find out what was written down didn't work quite the way they thought it would, thought it did, and there may be other written, stuff written down that agrees with me, but really I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to figure it out for myself and go through that process. Hopefully I've got in here the bullet that's going to work well. Like I said, not chasing the absolute best one. And then with this format of 10 bullets of each, it's not many for my little puddle to start with, but I've also set up in my own lays and things the ability to change some of these sizes, shorten the bullets, bring them back to a slightly different profile, break back their weight off if I need to, that sort of stuff. And in truth, if I find something that's right on the edge and I need to do a different barrel, then that's what, I'll, that's what I'd like to do. I want to end up with a rifle that does shoot in true ELR, not trying to build the most accurate bullet. Um, and we'll see, we'll see how accurate it is. I'll go with my flight efficiency um, with what that rifle can do in a normal, reasonable powder charge and what I can make a bullet travel with the least MOA to travel out to. Really, I'd like to take the thing out to 4,000 yards. Um, and there's probably people who are also going to comment that um, there's obviously a 3,800 shot that we all know about in the sni a sniper kill with the 50 cal. It's not something to get into in any real level um, because I feel we know very little about what actually happened. Well, I know very little about what actually happened. But what I can tell you in any reasonable sense, without monstrous amounts of elevation wound into it or being at extremely high elevation, that the normal bullets that they're most likely to have been shooting are not going to have traveled there anywhere near as efficiently as what I want to end up with. Not saying it didn't happen, not saying that wasn't an absolutely marvelous shot, not saying all those things, I really don't know anything about it, so I don't want to go into it, but it's, it is, I am doing this also, as I mentioned before, um, sea level to, to high elevation changes things massively. I'm trying to make this two mile happen with a 50 cal at sea level, well, 1,000 foot above, 900 foot above sea level is where I want it to happen. So anyway, that's where I'm at. I got these bullets. Um, I actually had them now for um, six weeks, or eight weeks, I think it is. But basically when we've got wet ground and we haven't had dry ground. So I really have to wait. Um, it was a big push. We spent a fair bit of money in all sorts of ways. We're really hoping to get some stuff on the ground. But you get that. It's, it's for next season. We'll wait until it's dry. And I should explain that a little bit as well. I don't know where they're going to land, and I don't want to miss them. I've got, really, I want to go out with two or three bullets of each size and shoot them and get a result before I go pounding away. I don't want to shoot 10 and see what happened. I want to be able to shoot two, ideally, and see, okay, they landed there, they're good. Two, they landed there, they're good. Two, I'm going to have, I'm almost certain in some of these bullets, I think this one on the end of here is just on 900 grains, I've got a feeling it's going to tumble. It's going to actually tumble as it actually goes out there, and I won't see it land anyway. So I don't want to see any no sees, which means I want a shaven crop. So I want it mowed. Essentially, I want to be after harvest. I want nice, dry, and dusty, and we've got to pick the right conditions. So it, it is as ridiculous as it may sound. Even a 900 grain bullet can land out there, and you cannot see it at all unless you've got the right conditions. So we're after very good conditions to do a next level of testing. Hopefully, what that turns into is I get a decent result out of some of these bullets. It gives me some ideas and then I can go again. And rather than getting a hundred of um, 10 different styles, it'll probably be a hundred of three different styles. And then I can step up. Then I'll have, you know, 30 or 33 of each. Um, and I can go through and test a bit more and start to refine it. So I, hopefully I end up with a very efficient, very accurate bullet. Um, and maybe this is just a, um, a uh, chunk of money I'm spending, which is teaching me what, that I should read more and, and should trust more out there. Um, I am doing it the way I always do this sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. Um, the other bits and pieces we're doing with it, um, going through and sorting out our cases and sorting out bits and pieces, working out powder charges, all coming on really nicely. The rifle, it's sitting down over there now, um, is shoots really, really well. I can't thank the guys at Dolphin 
who got that chassis to us. That's a really nice to use thing. And the guys with the, with the true flight barrel and the barnard action, um, really nice, makes it really easy. There's no, I've, I've run up to a lot of powder now. I'm still not over pressuring my case, but pretty hard to see with those big heavy cases and big heavy primers, but it's really smooth and silky, unloads easy, does everything I'm supposed to do. So really happy with how everything's running. Um, and we'll see, hopefully I'm, I've got one of the, one out of that 10 is going to be an efficient bullet and I can just go and order 100 of them next time. But um, our custom CNC, thanks for the, the, the factory that took it on to do that side of things. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're learning, which is what really we're all about, uh, what I'm all about in what I'm doing and what I get out of the ELR shooting. Anyway, that's, um, that's an update on the 50 cal ELR project. Um, hope that's at least entertaining and um, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, down below here we've got a link to our web store where we have some of the specialised long range shooting products that we actually produce. Check them out. And for those of you who can, it'd be great to get some help. In our store we have support bits and when you purchase those the money goes direct to our channel and helps us bring these videos to you. Thanks guys. See you next time.